What's going on everybody? Today is going to be really exciting because we have a new project for the Hummer. That's been a little while since we did our last video. We've had a lot going on, especially since we got the custom interior in the Lotus. That last video was uh, pretty well received. Everybody pretty much likes the interior and I'm pretty excited with the way it came together. But today we just got up here to the shop and we're going to start mocking up our custom snorkel. Sorry if it's kind of loud, we're going to do it outside because there's a lot of stuff inside of the shop right now. And I don't want the intake and everything all taken apart off of the truck if you know we have to pull a car out or something like that. But we have a really cool assortment of various parts and stuff that hopefully is going to be everything that we need to make this intake happen. I kind of preemptively ordered a bunch of stuff right here. So here's all the different things that we ordered. We have a lot of four inch tubing. I actually have a three foot piece of tubing in there. We've got a right angle one. This is a Spectre kind of inline air filter. So there's a cone air filter inside of here. Now there wasn't a lot of data on like what the flow rate of this was or anything like that, but I found a lot of people using these on V6s and V8s for just its purpose, building custom snorkels. So I hope this is gonna work out. I think the truck's gonna like it. The whole system should flow better than what we have in there right now. We have a whole bunch of couplers, and one really cool thing that I found was this mushroom cap off of a Humvee. This is a pre-filter and that's gonna go right on the top of our intake. So from what I understand, this is like a refurbished uh, pre-filter that came from an active duty Humvee. At least that's what the description said. So that's a really cool nod to the heritage of the Hummer. I think it's gonna kind of top things off very nicely. Now we're not gonna be able to finish this whole project today. Today's goal is just to kind of mock everything up and make sure that everything that we have is gonna fit. I might need to order some more parts. There's a few things I know I'm going to have to do. We're gonna to have to have my buddy Jeff that helped us with the roof basket. He's gonna to have to weld on some aluminum parts here and there uh, to just do it really clean and neat. So I'm gonna to have to have him weld a few things and then finally we'll have to get it all powder coated. So today I'm gonna to pull the air box off, probably pull the windshield washer reservoir off because that's one of the main hurdles in all of this is that that windshield washer reservoir is right in the middle of the way. There's also gonna be some cutting and things involved, but I have seen a couple images floating around on the internet of people that have made functional snorkels on their H2. There's no kits available because it is such a difficult thing to do. We're gonna to have to cut part of the firewall or we might have to cut a few structural pieces right around the engine bay and things like that. I'm not too sure yet on everything we're going to have to do, but that's what we're here for today. We're gonna to see what all it's going to take to make this happen. Like I said earlier, we're right next to the highway, so if it's really loud, I apologize. But let's pop this thing open and see what we're looking at. All right, so here's your basic 6.0 that comes in, you know, a bunch of the GM trucks, all the Hummers and everything like that. The intake sy system is super, super simple. From your throttle body, you just have your stock intake that runs up to your MAF. And on the Hummer, the intake actually pulls from right here on the side of the fender, which that's a really tight fit. I don't see how it gets substantial airflow at all. You can actually see where that piece rubs a little bit right here. So if we close this back down, you know, there's not much of a gap right there at all for it to pull air from. And then you have like gasket here that's part of your fender liner and all of this is pretty much closed off. So it's really only pulling a little air from right here and then a little from up there. So I think our whole system should probably flow a little bit better. The plan is to cut this piece right here, this little top cap, and we'll have our intake, the snorkel, we'll have it, I don't know, maybe a foot high, not super high like some people way up there, but I think the plan is to have the snorkel just about a foot up here. I think we'll also run a brace coming into here and then that structural piece right here, that might be a really good area to weld some tabs onto our intake pipe and then bolt it into here as opposed to trying to bolt it to this plastic piece. But anyway, I'm gonna start pulling all of this apart and see what we're working with. So we made really quick work of all of that. Like I said, that whole intake system is incredibly simple. 
and uh, the roof basket makes a really good place to store all of our uh, all of our parts and stuff. And then we have a nice little place for all of our bolts and stuff here, so it's actually pretty convenient. But as you can see, we've got the intake all off, and now we're worried about this water tank. And if you're watching this specifically to do this on your own Hummer, this might be a little different. On the limited edition truck, there was a water heater for the winter time and the majority of them were, were defective and not any good. And I'm thinking that this piece right here must be that water heater. We got a pretty thick power wire running in at the bottom and the back of the coolant reservoir still has the motor. Uh, at first, I thought that maybe this was an external motor and the water heater. I could be wrong on that. I actually have no idea what I'm really looking at. I'm just making an educated guess. So what I think we're going to do is we're probably just going to get rid of all of this and we're gonna buy a standalone system. I believe like Vibrant Performance has a standalone reservoir with a pump in it. So I think we're just gonna get rid of all of this for right now. The original plan was to modify this a little bit and having a, you know, maybe plastic weld it back together. But no matter what I can think of using this in any way is not going to be an elegant solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and then we're gonna pull the top of this off and see what we're working with as far as that kind of firewall in that area goes. So the more I look at this, I'm pretty sure this is the heater. And from what I understand, these are defective from the factory and can cause fires and things like that. So we actually had unplugged this a long time ago because I hit the button on the dash and it started freaking out and made a lot of noise. And so we unplugged that. So I don't know, I might list this for sale just on the Hummer page. I don't know, some of the Hummer aficionados are, you know, they really like random rare parts like this. So I don't even know if it works, but maybe somebody, you know, can take it apart or, you know, just have it. But anyway, we have so much room for activities now. And as you can see, you know, there's, uh, there's quite a few things we're gonna have to cut right here. Looks like we're going to have to, you know, we're gonna have to cut at least a four inch circle to get some of these pipes and stuff out. We're gonna have to pop this thing off. I already started. These just require good night. A little bit of force, luckily, we didn't break anything. And it looks like we're gonna have to pull off this whole top piece that goes all the way across to, to get this off and see what's underneath it. But you can see we do have some structural stuff right here. And so, like I said, that might be a really good area to actually bolt the pipe to. And so we'll have our four inch snorkel coming down and then maybe like a five inch aluminum disc welded. And with, uh, we'll, you know, use some rivet nuts or some bolts and that would secure extremely strong. And then even then, I think we might still run a piece of strap aluminum over here right inside the door behind the windshield and maybe uh you know rib nutted in there so looks like i'm gonna have to pull its whole trim panel off i bet it's not too difficult aside from maybe the windshield wipers there you just have to pop those off and i think all of it should just come up as a single unit we'll see so like i said these pop up with just a little bit of force it'd probably be better if you're worried about your paint to uh, use a plastic trim removal tool, uh, something like that. The paint on this Hummer is destroyed already. So I'm not too, too worried about it. If it was really nice, we would not be doing all of this stuff to it, taking out in the wilderness to explore. So that's how those come off. And then if you've never taken off a wiper arm before. This is how you take off the wiper arm on most vehicles. The back ones are usually pressed in. The front ones have a little retaining clip, and so normally just fold the arm back, and then you can see this little clip right there. I'll try to do this with one hand. So it articulates up, and then you pull it off. And you don't really have to remember exactly where they went because there's usually a little chuck. This one, there's usually a little chuck right there, and it's gonna fit back into the same place that it came off. So we'll set that up there. Of course, just remember which one was right and left, save you some trouble later. So now it looks like all we have left, we have a screw here. Actually, there's a screw on that side. This is a bolt, it's like a six or a seven. We have a couple Christmas tree tabs. Go ahead and pop these off and we'll get the other one and then pull this off. So boom, that cover is off. You can see your 
wiper arm motor and everything like that. And just pull this little access cover off and down in there is, I guess that's the cabin air filter. I didn't think I had cabin air filter, so it's probably time to change that. And look at all of this nasty stuff in here. Ugh, look at that, jeez. I have to go get a tetanus shot after messing with some of this old metal and nasty stuff in here. Look how much dirt there is. God, look at that. <laughs> jeez. Anyway, it does look like we have a slightly different problem than I thought I was going to have. However, I'm not too worried about it. So my first thought was I could just come straight down with the pipe and then straight out. It seems pretty straightforward. It seems like that would work, except the center of this, which would be the center of our little cap, there's some pretty serious like structural pieces inside of there. You can kind of see we have this like non-structural bit right here, but then behind it, we have the actual firewall and then you have fender and things like that right there. So I think we're gonna to have to adjust our design a little bit. So I think the plan now is to try to come down. We'll probably cut this out as far as we can, probably right there. And then we'll have to come out this way down. We'll modify some of this, of course, and then out through somewhere about in that area. That looks like that might be the only way to do it safely without really messing with the firewall too much. But I'm gonna spend the next uh, little bit kind of looking around and seeing what a good solution might be. So that might seem like a bigger problem than it actually is because uh, we got one of our four inch pipes right here. These pipes are very large, but Luckily, we're able to mount this cap back on without having to put that entire panel back on here. So we can see pretty well what the center of this would be. And so let's set that on there. And, you know, just uh, visually, you know, kind of center it by eye. So if we look down, it looks like if we center this pipe, I know you can't, whoa, almost lost it. Here, let's set it down before we mess it up too bad. This right here also holds that main piece in with a screw. And then we have these tabs here to hold the cap on and the other mounting tabs for those are up in there. Let me see those spots right there. So I'm thinking I can cut this as far over as I need to, to try to center that pipe as close as we can in that it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but really that's the only place it can go. If we moved it over here, we'd have to come out through through that grate right there. And it would be way over here in front of the passenger. That doesn't seem like a very good solution to me. So we did a quick test cut with the air saw just to make sure I could cut through this. And it's going to be slow going. And there's a lot of other tools you could use to cut something like this but the air saw is going to be kind of slower and a little bit more precise. And so it's going to be prettier. No one's ever going to see this aside from you guys on YouTube that are watching this video. But if you've been following along with all the stuff that I do, I might not be the most professional or the most proficient, but I like things to be as good as I can possibly do them. And so I'm going to follow this all the way to this kind of more solid piece that's right next to the fender. And we'll bring it down. We're going to open that gap up kind of all the way around right here. We'll, leave, we'll try to leave these two spots intact, those mounting points. If we can't, there's a lot of other ways to mount that piece of plastic up here, so I'm not too worried about it, but that should give us a lot more room to figure out the angles that we're going to have to use for that pipe. Okay, so I've been at it for about an hour since that last clip, and it's coming along pretty well. I did have to get the Sawzall out for a few areas right through here, and it's not the prettiest, but you know, we came from about right here, and here, 
and we came around this. I used a drill to kind of round these edges off and I also has a, have a rasp and I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit better. And we also had to, I had to trim some of this housing off of this screen mesh where the cabin air filter is. And I think I'm gonna come back over this. I might put a newer screen on here just uh, cause there's some holes in this one and it's getting a little old. And then I'm just gonna silicone it back on. So that might, uh, you know, keep a little bit more debris and stuff out of there but we're coming along really really well we'll grab our right angle pipe now i just bought this to have i don't know if this is the piece i want to use here but now there's enough room to kind of manipulate it in here and you can see we're you know we're not at the right angle yet but if we trim this area inside of here probably just straight down here back to that and we get rid of that we should be able to get this at a perfectly 90 degree angle. And we do have a small problem. This is not really centered on the top of this panel. And it might just have to be something I live with. It's actually a lot closer to being right on the edge right here instead of in the center. And the issue is we can't come back anymore right here without cutting into you know, that's more structural piece here. You know, that's part of this actual body and things like that. And so I don't really know if it's worth cutting all of this out, getting into this fender area and into this actual part of the body just to center this. I think, you know, if we have our pipe right there, you know, so we might need to round that off just a little bit. But if we have it right there, I don't think that's the, here, we'll scoot it back just a little bit. Obviously it's not gonna be that shape, but I think that's, that's probably fine. Even if it's not centered inside of that, it's actually going to be functional. And that still gives us an opportunity to put, you know, a ring right here that we bolt a short pipe to. And, uh, you know, with some rib nuts or something like that, that way it's gonna be incredibly strong. Even if we hit something while we're off-roading, it's not gonna knock it off. And that would prevent us from having to actually put a strap right there. So it's coming along just like everything. It's not exactly what I thought was going to happen when we got into it, but I think we have a pretty good solution. Hopefully it's gonna turn out really cool when we're done. I'm excited. I'm starting to second guess how many people actually have real functioning snorkels that are done properly on this truck. This has been a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. I have the whole day to figure everything out. I have a few parts that got delivered to the house. We have an adapter ring and a few other things I need to go pick up just to help us mock it up. It's coming along pretty good. So anyway, what I think we're going to do now is you can see that's like silicone glue line where this thin piece, it looks like it's actually been glued here or it's, you know, been bonded together. So I think we're going to start where this hole is and uh, I think we'll bring it up, I don't know, about six inches or so and come across and up and that'll cut all of this out to the firewall. That way, that should let us, uh, that should let us get it where we want it because I'd really like that main intake canister as close to that side of the truck as possible. And then we'll have the MAF sensor here and then we'll run, you know, have the MAF sensor about right there. And uh, could even be actually right there facing straight. And we did run into another small issue. If I want this intake pipe to come straight out of the throttle body and straight right here, uh, we're going to have to do something about the water neck. We might have to put an AN fitting on here and uh, run this coolant hose out along this. But this is the reason we're doing all of this today. So I can figure out what final parts I need to order to get the install done. Okay, so it's been a big full day. I've got a lot done. All of the cutting and everything is done except for the top piece that's going to come out. I know all of the extra parts I'm gonna have to order and we're pretty much done. I think I'm just gonna wrap this up for the day, put everything back together. So here's where we're stopping for the day. And it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. We need two things really. Number one is if I want this part of the intake to be totally straight, which it really needs to be for this to work out, I'm going to have to get maybe a 90 degree elbow, um, maybe to convert this part of the water neck. If I can get it to come straight out underneath this intake, then we can shorten this hose a little bit and get it maybe underneath the intake or something like that. You know, I don't know if we can get a new water elbow, 
and pull its pressed in one out. I don't know if that's a possibility or not, but yeah, we're gonna have to figure out a way to move this coolant hose here out of our way. But the plan is to have a straight pipe coming along here. We'll have our MAF sensor on that straight pipe about in the stock location. We'll have another short straight pipe here. We'll have our canister right here and we'll weld up some mounts or something for it. Uh, we have a couple old holes from the original air box. We also have some stuff right here. So we have some good OEM mounting locations to build some brackets. Finally, we're gonna have maybe this right angle pipe. We'll have to trim it some. It's gonna connect to the air canister here and run up. It's probably about something about like that. Unfortunately, if you take a look at this, there's no way to get this to be centered while maintaining a four inch pipe all the way through. And it kind of defeats the purpose if we stop this down to like a two inch pipe and bank it and come up. It just really defeats the purpose. So I think we're just going to have to be on its far edge. Right here, it's just gonna have to come up about right there. And that's fine, I really don't care that much to have it dead center. It would have been nicer from an aesthetic point, but we would have to chop up all of this stuff right here. And I just really don't feel like doing all of that. And all of that seems a little bit more structurally important than you know just this flimsy stuff up here that we trimmed a little bit out of. And so I think that's what we're going to do. I'm gonna get a couple couplers ordered for the coolant elbow, see if we can fix that. And then I'm gonna order a 45 degree coupler up here so that we can hit this at a little bit of an angle, give us an opportunity to trim this so it fits a little bit better. But I guess that's about it for today. I really hoped to get just a little bit further to show y'all maybe like a running driving prototype, but that's okay. I knew I wasn't gonna be driving it today. I was just hoping to have it maybe all mocked up by the end of today. And while it involved doing a few more things that I anticipated, I think it's gonna be really sharp when we're all said and done with it. Now, once we get the new stuff in, I'm gonna have to modify all of its pipe. I'm gonna have to cut it and do some welding, make some tabs, and we're finally gonna have to get it all powder coated. So it might be a couple weeks or even a month before I have like a finished kind of overview video of the entire thing on the truck and it running and driving once we do that we've got a little exhaust work to be done and then we're going to get a custom tune onto the truck to try to eke out a few more miles per gallon i've seen a lot of reports of guys running lifts with big tires and getting an mpg tune and they're getting like 15 or 16 miles a gallon which over the course of a big trip is pretty significant that's like four or five more than what i'm getting right now i know this video has probably been pretty loud we're right next to the highway i apologize the next one will definitely be inside the shop but i had the whole day free and i really wanted to do this today but if you made it this far Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.